Good evening. Thanks for coming tonight. God is able, He will never fail. He is Almighty God. Greater than all we seek, greater than all we ask. He has done great things, lifted up, He defeated the grave, raised to life. Our God is able in His name. We overcome for the Lord. Our God is able. God is with us. God is on our side, He will make a way, far above all we know, far above all we hope, He has done great things, lifted up, He defeated the grave, raised to light, our God is a We overcome for the Lord our God is able. God is with us, He will go before, He will never leave us. Trust the sweetest frame, 
but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak and made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord. Darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every hot and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil.
morning star, King of all days, reign in our hearts, ride on our praise, you are crowned in majesty, waken us now, set us ablaze, let your kingdom come. Let your name be raised, hear the song of the redeemed. Be exalted as we sing. Hail to the King, hail to the living Word. inviting us in. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you. Thank you, God. Just bless our service now. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Pastor Bernard in Talasha from Livingston Greater Grace Church. I was trained and discipled by Pastor Renato Brown in Lusaka, Zambia. God spoke to me about Livingston in 2010. We had visited this city five times for two years until finally in 2012, on the first day of May, we packed all our belongings, closed our businesses permanently, said bye to our friends yes. and relatives. Until finally in 2012, on the first day of May, we packed all our belongings, closed our businesses permanently, said bye to our friends and relatives, and moved with our families 500 kilometers or nine hours drive from the capital city, Lusaka, south towards the border with Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Namibia. Livingston is a great location to reach and reach regions of Botswana, which is only about 45 minutes drive to the border town. 
It is also a great location to reach the western part of Zimbabwe, which is 15 minutes to its border town. It's also a great location to Namibia, which hasn't been reached. It's only about two hours to the border town and also three hours to the border with Angola. Way before all this happened in 2008, God spoke to me about Botswana. We've been visiting that country at least twice a year for the past eight years. There has been great hindrances and obstacles in church registration there. But when we visited this year, there was a great encouragement. The country is now very open to work and missionaries again. We believe very soon we will register the church in Botswana. We've been here in Livingston for the past four years. We've seen the hand and work of God on so many things. He has kept us and provided for our needs. We have seen God bless us as families as well as a church. God has sustained and built our little businesses which support us in the core and for our families. God has also built our personal faith and motivation to build others. We are a team of three families with about 13 people. Pastor Gift Mwanza is my assistant pastor. Kennedy Makungo finished Bible school and moved his family to join us permanently this year. We have a church membership of about 50 people, 25 Bible school students, 11 of which graduated last semester, with three years diplomas, two years certificate. We have a hospital ministry. We visit the two major hospitals once every week and pray and speak to patients about the Lord Jesus Christ. We also have an outreach in a dense lower class living area in the outskirts of the city called Libuyu, where we have a great response. Here we meet friends in extreme poor conditions. They wouldn't afford to get on a bus to the city. We hire a bus every Sunday to go to that place and ferry them to church. We also have taken in our house a single orphan whose mother could not pay for his school fees. We took him three years ago and he's about a year to finish his high school. We've decided to start an orphanage because the problem for orphans in Zambia is extremely out of proportion. There are more than one million orphans in Zambia giving it the highest per capita orphan rate in the world. Livingston being at the core of the problem as it is the highest in the country in terms of HIV prevalence rate. We are very grateful for you standing, walking, running with us in this work. Thank you for your love. We thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your sacrifices. We are extremely grateful. Trying to think of the last time I ran into an elephant going down 95. I don't, I don't recall it. Maybe it happened, but uh, that was quite a picture, actually. Yeah. Um, so for the offering tonight, um, uh, in the book of Nehemiah, um, I was just reading that again this weekend, and God gives uh, Nehemiah a burden, and the burden was to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls around the city. And, you know, when you think about this, Nehemiah goes really by himself with a handful of people with the commission really from God and uh, to go and rebuild this. And I was thinking like it could seem overwhelming to Nehemiah to go there and with the responsibility to build a wall around the city. And it's not just a wall like one, one cement block wide. It's a wall that you can walk on and live on and, and really that protected the city. And it was quite a task. And you know, in Nehemiah chapter 3, it's very interesting. Um, Nehemiah starts, to, you don't have to turn it, it starts to talk about how it happened. And first it says that the high priest rose up with his brethren, the rest of the priest, and they built the sheep gate, and they sanctified it. And verse 2 says, and next to him, the men of Jericho built, and next to them, this group built. And then the fish gate was built. In verse 4, and next unto them, this group was there, and next unto them, there was another group, and next unto them, there was another group. So you get this picture, um, and I, I think in this chapter, it's the whole of chapter 3, 26 times it says, and next unto them, or after them was this group. And, and Nehemiah, in, in wisdom, in his great wisdom, basically said, this is too much for any one person to bear. So he divided up the work amongst all the families and the priests and so on so that each one had a manageable portion of the wall to build. And it's amazing, this whole chapter, next to them was this group, next to them. They were only responsible for what they could build that one area. And, um, uh, and the, as we know, the wall was built in 52 days, which was really miraculous. And so much so that their enemies that had tried to stop it their testimony was, when they saw how quick the wall was built, they perceived that this work was wrought by their God. So, how does that apply to the offering? Well, 
You know, God doesn't say to any one of us, any family or individual, like, you need to support the church. It's your sole responsibility to support the church financially. God has never asked us to do any more than our portion. And when you take one portion and next to them is another portion and next to them is another portion and after them is another portion, and you look at everybody in this room who comes to this church three times a week, it happens. The wall was built in 52 days. It, it's miraculous that this church with a, with a budget of over $2 million, over $40,000 a week, if any one person, and Pastor Shabelli said to me, hey, we're down this much, and I said, I can't even think about it. You know, God, it's God, God's going to do something, you know, because it's each portion. It's not a burden of any one person. It's the responsibility of all of us, and God just says to us very simply, do your portion, and when you put it all together, God will supply the needs of this church. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for that, and let's pray also as we pray for the offering, pray for this ministry in Zambia. So, Father, first we do lift up Livingston, uh, Zambia, the work there, God, amazing work, the vision of the pastor and his team and his family. They moved there. They really left everything behind. They moved there because you have prompted them to go, Lord, and uh, we just pray that you would cover them as a family, cover them as a church, their finances, Lord, the team members, give them fruit in that city and also beyond that city into uh, the neighboring countries, Lord. So we really just pray and ask your covering upon them, your blessing upon them, and also, Lord, your blessing upon this offering tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.
like a rushing wind, Jesus, breathe within. Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way in me. Like a mighty storm, stir within. stand, open your Bibles so we prepare for Pastor Shabelli's message. Uh, we're going to read from uh, 1 Peter 4.10. Amen. First Peter 4.10, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and the Word of God, and we thank you, 
We're thankful that you are beautiful for all situations, and you are beautiful for the situation that we're in tonight. Uh, We just believe you, Lord, that your name is excellent in all the earth, and we are here, Lord, to receive from you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, ministries like the one in Zambia. Lord, we thank you for all that's happened in in Serbia and in Hungary this weekend with Pastor Schaller. Continue to bless his time there. Lord, we just thank you for the weekend. Lord, we had with the ladies, Lord, for the things around uh, Maryland, Silver Spring. Lord Jesus, have it a grace, all that you're doing in Baltimore. Lord, we thank you tonight for Pastor Shabelli and his message. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to anoint us to hear uh, your heart toward us, Lord to see you behind all the pages, all the sentences, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Quicken us, Lord, to receive from you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Before I begin uh, this message, Pastor Shala said they had an amazing time in uh, Budapest, Hungary today. He said they had almost 700 people out, which is amazing. I don't know that was... A, number of different services, but he said it was incredible. He sends his greetings. Greetings. Wave to him. Greetings. He'll see it, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, I can't let that go by without telling one elephant story. <laughs> I mean, I have to. I just, I, I was thinking about it. Then I saw an elephant there, and he says, not on 95. Actually, in that very same place, Livingstone, we were... Um, in a certain place, uh, it's not like your typical zoo game park, but things run wild there, you know. And um, I had a slingshot. And with one eye and a slingshot, I didn't think I could, you know, like have any real effect on an elephant uh, with a slingshot and one bad, one good eye. Well, I hit this elephant, and it wasn't the best deal because you know elephants are very tough their skin but somehow the target <laughs> hurt and he turned and like they start to snort and we got we got out of there quick you know because <laughs> elephants <clears throat> elephants can do some interesting damage to your vehicle your body and a few other things like that um, and the thing is about a year later we went back to that place and I somebody told me they remember and I saw this elephant, and I said, don't even go, not even up this road, because, you know, if it's true what we've always been told about elephants have great memories, then uh, I don't want him having a memory of what took place one year ago. Now, don't, don't write me an email tomorrow saying, why do you abuse animals? I, it was just having fun, and I'm thinking, like, you know, you cannot hurt them. They're like, you know, their skin is like that, but... Um, you know, I just was playing around. I like slingshots. They have these amazing ones in Africa. They're like rub- they're from- made from a tire. And you pull them back, and you'd be surprised what you can do with them. It's really incredible. Uh, yes, you can pick demons off in the air uh, with a slingshot. So anyway, that was my elephant story. We won't see one on 95. We were, we were on our way to Burkina Faso, and one came right across the front of our car. And I was like, Wow, you know, just like went right this way, like, like a shot out of the bush. And I thank God he didn't step on the car on his way over. So uh, those are the elephant stories for the night. I'll tell more at the wrap, uh, uh, more interesting stories about giraffes and, uh, and different things like that, crocodiles and whatever. No, I'm just having fun. This is a great verse here. As we think about uh, this morning's message, and I meditated and thought about it today, about the sufficiency of grace. 2.16 of 2 Corinthians, and who is our sufficiency? 3.5 of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, our sufficiency is of God. 9.8 of Corinthians, he has all sufficiency. Then when we come to chapter 12, which was the heart of the message, uh, the thorn in the flesh, Satan, a messenger, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And because of this grace, Paul could say three things, if you remember what they were, 
in 2 Corinthians 12, 5 and 6, I glory in my infirmities. Verse 9, I'm glad in my infirmities, most gladly. Then he says, I take pleasure in my infirmities. Now, when you look at, like, infirmities, and, you know, really it means no ability to perform outside of God. You look at them, and there's not many people that would say that I am, uh, I glory, I'm glad, and I take pleasure in these things. But Paul could say it because he was one who was receiving from the nature and character of God. We said in Genesis chapter 17 that God came to Abraham, the father of our faith, and he said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. I am your sufficiency. And you've been trying to make things happen into Egypt, out of Egypt, Hagar, the, the, this whole thing has been going on, lying, that's my sister, when it's your wife, you know, and, and whatnot, and thank you. Is, aren't you glad that God can use the father of our faith, made mistakes, but was covered by God? Hello, are you here tonight? Okay, just, just checking, okay. Um, and it's amazing, his sufficiency from God. Then we use John chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. He himself, there was thousands of people that had to be fed. He himself knew what he would do. He knows what he will do. He is our sufficiency. 1 Thessalonians 5.24, faithful is he who calls you to himself who will also do it. Are you with me? Still with me. This is good. Okay. And then Romans 8.32, if he spared not his only son, will he not with him freely give us all things? And two and a half million people were provided for in the wilderness. That's a lot of water and a lot of food. For 40 years, I was hoping that Pastor Adam was going to calculate that for me. I did it once, but I forgot, like based on how many quarts of water a day, three meals a day for 40 years for two and a half million people. How many meals is that? You should have that answer by the time I'm done. Okay, you got you got one of those pad things, you know, uh, whatever they call them, and can do those kind of things. But then he would be distracted from the message, and I would be the reason why that happened, and that's not good. So. Our sufficiency is of God. And when we are looking for a sufficiency outside of God, something that will satisfy us, something that will provide for us, then we find ourselves getting really dried up in our Christianity because we're looking in the wrong direction for our sufficiency. And this is key, looking in another direction for our sufficiency rather than looking to God. So here it says in 1 Peter chapter 4, and Peter understood the importance of seeing God as his sufficiency. Remember what he said? Remember that statement he made? It sounded so amazing, wasn't it? Though everybody forsake you, not me. I'll go to prison with you and die. <laughs> Weren't you with Jesus of Nazareth? I don't know the man. Weren't you with Jesus of Nazareth? This little girl, right? Little maid. Who? Jesus who? Right? I'm going to go to prison. I'll die with you. <laughs> self-sufficiency rather than sufficiency in God. And when I operate in self-sufficiency, and our whole lives we are taught that way and trained that way in school systems and whatnot and by the world system, you need to be self-sufficient, not rely on people. You got to make it in life, you know? And God is saying, no, I, I want to be your sufficiency. And this is key. And Peter understood that he didn't have it. And it, by the way, sometimes it takes coming to the end like the Luke 15 prodigal son. He spent all that he had on riotous living and he was bankrupt. He was finished. He was in want. He was eating in a pig pen. And then he came to himself in verse 18 of Luke 15. Is there not bread enough to spare in my father's house? I'm going back. And so deriving our sufficiency from God, not from a religious system, not from other people. Thank God that people minister to us and God uses them. Don't take that the wrong way. But our sufficiency is not from myself, my own ability to perform, not from this world. We rely on so many things to make ourselves content and satisfied. And God says, I love you. I wish you would just come to me because I am your sufficiency. 
And this is key. So Peter says in 1 Peter 4.10, as you have received the gift, even so minister as good stewards of the many-sided, manifold grace of God. Are you here tonight? You still here? Okay. I don't want to mentally lose you. Many-sided grace of God. Manifold grace of God. You know, this is amazing. This word in the Septuagint could also be found in Genesis 31, verses 8, 10, and 12, and also could be found in Genesis 37, 3, that Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors. It's the word poikilas in the Septuagint. It's the very same word or a derivative of the word. And it was a coat of many colors, many pieces, and all the pieces had different colors. I think they used to wear them in the hippie days. Those kind of things. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about, you know. We're going back into the 50s, right? Pastor Sturge knows he was a hipster. Huh? You had those tie-dye shirts and those bell-bottom pants, right? You know, with, with all kinds of braids in his hair. and everything. No, I, I don't think so. No, not you. <laughs> Many colored, you know. I'd come home and my father would say to me, what, what is that that you have on? There's so many colors, nobody can figure it out. I just used to pretend I was a, one of those type of people to hide other things. Yeah, I had multi-personalities. Did you ever meet people with multi-personalities? Oh, yeah, they were around. I, well, we ran a counseling center for like 10 years, my brother and I, called the Lifehouse Christian Counseling Center. And from the center, we had a home. And uh, we would meet some of the great, remember Don Sherry? Remember him? One day, he called me and said, you got to go to the house. He's lying uh, in his bed naked. So I went there, and I said, Don, what are you doing? He goes, I'm waiting on God. <laughs> the Bible says, you know, to be says, spiritually naked, not like this. Get out of the bed right now. Put clothes on before I straitjacket you. <laughs> no, we had some very interesting cases. And there's a few of them that are sitting here that actually, <laughs> that actually made it. I'm not looking at you, Pastor Steve Morello, at all. I wouldn't even think about that. No, you, weren't, you were not one of them. But uh, m- many personalities, a person with multiple personalities. I've had a number of them come. Which one are you today? They come in for counseling. Like, who are you, that, who are you today? You know, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. And then you have to minister to them with wisdom of God. So many manifold, many-sided, poikilas, many-colored, many-sided. And we need this grace, grace on every side. Manifold grace. You know why we need manifold grace? Because 1 Peter 1, 2 says we're going to have manifold trials. Oh, boy. Sorry to bring that Sunday night news to you. Manifold trials and tests. That means they're going to be so diverse, so, so different than the last ones. Then it says in 1 Peter 1, 6, rejoice because of manifold temptations. How can you rejoice with manifold temptations? It says greatly rejoice and rejoice. James 1, 2. Why? Because I have manifold grace in the test and in the trial. So maybe I've got, I've got this year of financial trial and then all, God delivers and then all of a sudden there's this kind of a test or a trial and then there's something else. Every time I turn, it's something else. Have you ever noticed that? After a while, you get dizzy. You turn, you know, every, you have, this, God delivers. Then you go, you think, oh, wow, I got delivered. And then you go this way and go, uh-oh, uh-oh, many-sided. But with these many-sided trials and tests, we have manifold grace. And Ephesians 3.10 says, we have manifold wisdom. What else do I need in the middle of manifold grace, manifold tests and temptations, but manifold grace and manifold wisdom? Many-sided wisdom of God. Joseph had many different things go on in his life. I mean, he sold into slavery by his own brothers. Betrayed by his own brothers. He is tempted by Potiphar's wife. 
He's put in prison. He's in Egypt where they worship all kinds of strange animals and multiplicity of gods. He's in there at 17 years old, and but he's got on a, he's got a coat of many colors. And it's not just something worn on the outside. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm born again. But it's something on the inside. Are you with me? Something on the inside. He has got manifold wisdom and manifold grace to handle all of these things that take place. And it, it was so incredible in his life that whenever there was a problem in Egypt, like a famine, they went to Joseph. They, it was said by Pharaoh, go to Joseph. He's got the answer. And here you are, maybe in the midst of a neighborhood or a job or a family situation, and there's going to be all kinds of things that go on in people's lives. And by the way, we have an answer for people. They've got this situation and that situation, a problem here. And by the way, the problems and the situations and the sins and the evil that is going on in this world today is really interesting. All kinds of strange things. I don't want to talk about too, much, too many of them because they'll come, and, they'll come and like arrest you for something like, you know, you're promoting something and I'm not, you know. I've, I've heard that before. You better be very careful. You should be careful, Pastor Shabelli. Some of the things you say, you know, what could happen? Well, I've already been in prison eight times. What's the big deal? Manifold prisons. <laughs> yeah, I, what, so what, what are you going to do? Huh? Kill me? I go to heaven. I said that to a guy one time. He put a gun to my head and said, stop preaching. He hated, he hated Christianity, and he was a drug addict. I said, look, at you, you're, you're pretty ignorant. I was shaking when this was going on. You know, I was like, you know, like sweating, armpits drenched. You know? And I said, can you imagine, sir, you're going to go to prison for sending me to heaven? He said, what? I said, you kill me, I'm going to heaven, and you go to jail. I said, is this worth it? He goes, no. He says, tell me more about this Jesus. That was great. I, I, I had talked to him about Christ. We prayed. It was amazing. It was a little bit of manifold wisdom in the midst of what was a very scary situation. Happened one time in Florida on Avenue D. We were preaching, and a guy came with a knife. You say, well, why, how do you always get into these things? I don't know. And he said, stop preaching. And then a guy I had been witnessing to in front of a package store who was a heroin addict stepped in front of the guy with the knife and said, leave the preacher alone or I'll kill you. He had a gun. And I thought to myself, wow, how God can deliver. This is amazing. This is incredible what's going on here. I just stood back because, you know, the guy was like this with the knife about eight feet away and threatening me. Stop preaching. Like, no. I just stopped for a minute. But then that guy came right and he said, you ain't touching the preacher. I said, wow. This is God. He's got, and by the way, there's many little things that happen like falling off a bicycle and God delivers you because you fall on the grass. That's a, still a deliverance from God. Amen? Are you with me? <clears throat> Some of the things we eat and drink, we really need to be delivered for manifold wisdom and manifold grace. You say, what is that that I just put in my mouth, you know? It's very interesting. So God says, I have got manifold wisdom and manifold grace for every test and trial that you would ever go through in your life. And we need it because in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, it says there are manifold lusts. And by the way, don't always equate the word lust with something that has to do with something sexual. Lust is a word that means what's on your mind. Epithumia, what's upon the mind. Is there such a thing as an anxiety lust? Thank you. Is there such a thing as a fear lust? Yes. Is there such a thing as a doubt lust? But think of this. There's so many things that could be on the mind that could control my mind rather than thinking with God. Insecurity lusts. They're everywhere. I mean, it's, it's interesting. And it's something that epithumia, it's upon my mind, and I will not get delivered by God's word. And God says there's diverse lust, but I've got, I've got for you manifold grace and manifold wisdom. One moment, they, they want to put you in a fire in Daniel 3. Then they want to throw you in the lion's den. I'm not going with lion stories, not to the rap. Then they want to put you in, in, in the lion's den in chapter 6. You have the food test in chapter 1. Then you have the demons 
from hell coming at him with some of the most powerful demonic overseers of countries going at Daniel. It was so incredibly powerful. He was on his face for 21 days, praying and fasting. And then he got delivered. And God, I love how he got delivered. God said to him, Daniel chapter 10, verses 19 and uh, 11, O oh man, greatly loved. You are greatly loved. I'm going to deliver you, Daniel. So every single day, I have an opportunity to receive manifold grace and manifold wisdom. That's why we have the Bible. See what this is? What is this called? It's a Bible. It's God's word. I can mix faith with it. I can receive wisdom from God's word right here. It isn't just I only get this when I come to church, but every day man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know what? Get off of those, get off of all those technologically advanced things and put your face in the book. That's Facebook. That's, that's my Facebook. That hurt. Did I leave some metal in there or something? That was like strange. Okay, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm okay. Put your face, put my face in the book, God. Give me grace so I can put my face in the book and get something from God. Isn't it awesome? Something from God. You say, well, I'm not, I don't have to read the Bible. I'm not a pastor, or I'm not a, you know, an evangelist, or I don't work for the church. Really? I guess you never get tested. Satan could care less about you. He would never tempt you. He would never come against a Christian in a church that's sitting there in the pew. <laughs> oh, yes, he will. And I need manifold grace and manifold wisdom for every single test. Anybody ever had, don't raise your hand, ever had a relationship test? <clears throat> Marriage test? Physical test? Huh? Financial test? Who's <laughs> Who was that? Is that you or him? How about a health test? Huh? Hello? Anybody ever had a health test? <laughs> well, hello. Huh? Some of you young people are going, well, we don't even know what you're talking about. You'll find out. <laughs> You'll find out. By the way, somebody gave me a big shoehorn today. This big, right? <laughs> right? It's this big. Like I got loafers. I don't know if I, I mean, you know, it's like I can't tie them. I can tie my shoes, but loafers are better. My wife says she's going to get me a second pair, right? Is that true? Where are you? Okay, you're buying. And then she'll just take it from whatever. So I know I, I, I end up paying anyway. doesn't matter. Manifold tests. Wow. Right? I get these airplane tests, you know. You're flying an airplane. <laughs> it's like the person sitting next to you like, is a little bit like maybe double your size. And they're like leaning over in your seat. Like they're like, literally you're like. And they're sound asleep, you know. And like you don't even know. You just go stand up in the back. I just go stand in the back and say, you know what? This ain't happening. Could you change my seat? You know, or how about the baby test on airplanes? You're exhausted. And they're. I thought I had a good seat. And I'm like, right, I got the baby test. There they are. There's like six of them. And they're moving around, and they come up, and they're, hey, hi, how are you? You know, they don't even know who you are, and they're grabbing your face. Mm-hmm. Hello? Yeah. One time I was in an airplane, and I got the upside-down test. The plane went upside down over the Sudan. I'm like, this ain't supposed to be like this. You know, everything fell this way. And the pilot, like, made a mistake. I knew there was a problem with that pilot because before we flew, I noticed that we were still chained to the tarmac. And I said to the pilot, excuse me, because it was a small plane, about five passengers. I said, excuse me, would you lock out the window? He goes, for what? I said, we're chained. He goes, oh. I'm like. <laughs> they called it United Airlines. 
Pastor Eugene, are you here? You booked me on that flight. You remember? He goes right through us, electrical storm. I'm like, are you wacko? You don't go through when you go around. He goes, I thought you had faith. I said, in God, not you. <laughs> Tests, trials, huh? Hello? Are you with me? Huh? And they're many-sided. And that's not to scare us or make us be afraid. And it says that they're many-sided, but it says, greatly rejoice, James 1, 2, and 1 Peter 1, 6. Great. How can I greatly rejoice? Because in the middle of them, God is going to give me manifold grace and manifold wisdom. Whatever's going on, David had all kinds of tests. He had the test of Saul trying to throw a javelin at him, right? After he kills Goliath, and Saul should have been the one that stood up to Goliath, but he was, had a little bit of a problem with cowardice, okay? He was a head taller than everybody else. Then he wants to kill David. Then David has all kinds of situations happen. They burn his city with fire. I mean, all kinds of things. He's got to live in caves, He's got to be in caves and be in, in all these places in the wilderness. He's on the run and he's anointed king. But he's got manifold grace and manifold wisdom for whatever happens. That means for the rest of your life, God will supply you with manifold grace and manifold wisdom. All you have to do is be a receiver. Are you listening? Mm hmm You know, I said to somebody a while ago that they had a problem. They didn't come to church as often. As, as I, I, we were talking about, and they admitted that. They said, I don't, I don't come, and I, I, should, I need to come more. I said, can I tell you something? Let me give you an interesting insight into this. Every test and trial that you are going to have in Christianity in your life is going to happen whether you come to church or not. The trials are going to happen. And coming to church and reading your Bible is what gives you God's insight for victory in the trial. So when you don't come, you're going to get the trial, but you know what? You're not going to have any source of supply for the situation. They said, huh? I say, yeah. They said, but I thought God was the God of all grace. I said, yes, he is. You graciously are given the church. You graciously are given the Bible. That's the wisdom and the grace of God. And God said, here we do you ever, do you ever have any, um, any diverse tests in GGCA? Have you ever had, like, one thing that was a test or trial? None, huh? You're just covering the whole scene. I mean, you got, I remember Christian school. I was a headmaster of a Christian school. Wow. 300 students. Mm-hmm. That was years ago. You know what? I had this one guy, and he would F-bomb the teacher. So I took him one time. He was about 14 years old. I took him by the ear, and I brought him into the closet. And I, it was one of those walk-in closets. I said, and this, and this kid was given to me by his father because his father was in prison. So he said I could handle him. I said to him, Mark Anthony, I just gave him away, somebody's coming out of this closet, and it's not you. No, it was just kind of a, like a little bit of a threat. I know, I know, I know. You can't even look at a person strangely nowadays. You know what? That kid ended up going to Christian college. That kid became an awesome saint. He just needed a little bit the rubber meets the road. Oh, we're so passive nowadays. We don't want to ever say anything that might make him, you know. He, he just might, he, he might cry when he sees your face like that. Oh, really? And I'm not advocating anything, but I'm saying it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. We would have so many situations that would happen, and yet God would give manifold grace and manifold wisdom for every situation. Why wouldn't he? Do I expect that from God? Do I think that I'm going to face something? No test. How about 1 Corinthians 10, 13? No test or temptation which is common to man. God has provided a way of escape that you can bear it. Hello? That you can bear it. What's the way of escape? I am the way, the truth, and the life. A way of escape. It's God himself. So I don't fear trials. I don't fear tests. I don't fear opposition. I don't fear situations like that. Why? Because I know God's going to give me manifold grace and manifold wisdom. Even to the point of Acts 7 where Stephen gets dying grace. Amen? He sees Jesus at the right hand. You know, he doesn't see the stones coming. He sees Jesus. 
God will do that in our lives. Jesus Christ will do it. Joseph had a coat of many colors, manifold, on every side. God says that every side, every, by the way, that means problems on the inside. Anybody ever had any of those? Flesh lust against the spirit, spirit against the flesh. Hmm? Yes. But God says, I'll take care of you on the inside by giving you a, a, the Holy Spirit and making you a new person. I'll take care of you on the outside because I have a purpose for your life and grace will supply your purpose, 2 Timothy 1.9. Purpose and grace, every side, on the inside, on the outside, below, above, wherever it's going on, wherever you live. Some people say, I could never move there. I could never go on the mission field. I couldn't do that. You know what? God doesn't give you the grace till you get there. We, get, we're, we won't get there because we say, I, don't, I couldn't. No, when you get there is when you receive the grace. When we went to Africa is when we received the grace to live in Africa. Are you with me? When you go to New Zealand, you'll get the grace to live in New Zealand. I'm not going there. I don't know who it is, but somebody, somebody might. Whatever that means. But we're, you know, oh, I'm, so, I'm so, like, provoked about, like, I, I don't know, uh, getting married. And, 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 oh, you'll get the grace when you get there. What do you want, beforehand? That's not Matthew chapter 6. It says you'll get what you need for the day. Amen? I'll get what I need for the day. Manifold grace, manifold wisdom, so that whatever is coming my way, I can go to God's word and I can say, Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. You help me in this situation because so often we think we know what we're doing. And there's the big problem. We rely on self and the flesh and people and advice and all kinds of things that might be from God and might not be from God. And we do not realize that God wants to give me manifold grace and manifold wisdom in the test and trial. So there's nothing. I don't have to fear tomorrow or today or seeing an elephant on 95. I don't have to fear it at all. I got some people, I, I had some people, I, I love them. I felt every time a mosquito landed on them in Africa. Ah! It's, by the way, it's the most feared thing in the world is a mosquito. Do you know that? Mosquito kills more people than you can imagine. Forget elephants. These little mosquitoes. One time I swallowed one. And I said, I'll take care of you, you idiot. And I just swallowed them. You know? It was much easier than letting them bite me. Huh? Mosquitoes? Mosquitoes? My wife would be like lying in bed. We'd be in Uganda. And she'd be lying there, and I could hear them in the room. Mm -hmm. She'd say, get up and kill them. <laughs> I'm like, the room is dark. I don't know. I mean, she goes. So I, I, would, I would like pretend. I would go and actually pretend I actually hit them and killed them. Wow, got him. I come back in bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she'd go, liar. Get out again, you know. And I would be like. When I found that mosquito, I hammered him. I hit him with a baseball bat so many times that there was nothing left. But there was manifold mosquitoes. So I got manifold grace and manifold wisdom from God. Amen? Let's be receivers. Yes, there's going to be tests and trials. There's going to be temptations. Manifold types. 1 Peter 1.6, James 1.2. But I have a promise from God manifold grace and manifold wisdom in every situation. Amen? Amen? Father, thank you tonight. We all have a coat of many colors. Yes, on the outside and on the inside. And we're going we're gonna to pray for the sick after we give an invitation. So we'll go right into that so the pastors could come up and get ready. We're going to anoint you with oil and pray for you. If you desire to be prayed for, you can come up in front. I wish... Pray that the pastors would come up right now, Pastor Eugene, uh, Pastor Sturge, all of you that are here, and just get those bottles of oil from Pastor Steve, and we want to pray for people tonight. So let's bow our heads for a moment, and then we'll have the, is the music team still here? Okay, you're coming, okay. You didn't leave us, amen. Okay, Father, we pray tonight, manifold grace, manifold wisdom. 
you are here tonight, you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you're watching on the Internet, say, Jesus, save me. The grace of God that bring us salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us, training us for all people. Say yes to Jesus tonight. It's simply yes. Yes to God. Yes to the work of the cross. Yes to the blood. Yes to mercy. Yes to forgiveness. Yes to life. Yes to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Say yes to God. With our eyes closed, our heads bowed, just God save me tonight. Put your hand up. God save me. On the internet, acknowledge it any way that you are led to. Acknowledge it. Jesus, save me. We thank you tonight. Father, bless our time tonight as they come to sing up here. and uh, You can stand with us and uh, begin to come forward. People are going to be here to anoint you with oil, pray for you. And I'm not talking about just physical illness. Sometimes anxiety, fears, just things that are going on in my life, in your life, that God wants to just give us a touch from heaven. So you can trust him tonight. Thank you, God. Just let's stand together. Let's be praying while we're sitting there, standing there. Let's be praying for people as they come forward. If the Holy Spirit speaks to you, just come and be prayed for. Come and be prayed for. Tonight, come and be prayed for. Thank him tonight. Thank you for healing. Thank you for manifold healing because of manifold grace and manifold wisdom. Manifold power. You can even have somebody anoint you tonight in proxy for somebody else. Everybody exercising faith in a living God. 
That's how prayers are answered and people are healed. People are touched. Faith in a living God. A living faith in a living God. diseases mark 424 and God healed them thank you God manifold wisdom manifold grace for the many tests and trials and difficulties situations God has the answer all the promises of God are yea and amen yes and amen for Pastor Carl in India tonight. Touch him, God. Minister to him. Heal him, God. Pastor Morrison. Touch him, God. We believe God for healing. Thank you, God. Your presence. Marriages, God, tonight. Reconciliation. Backsliders coming home. lovingly comfort them and convict them through your nature and character. Bring them back, God, those who have gone astray. Draw them with cords of a man and bands of love. Thank you, God. Draw them. Draw them. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. The power of the Lord is present to heal. 
God heals tonight anxieties, fears, physical disorders, insecurities, bondage in any area, any addiction. Any addiction can go out the door tonight and never come back. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Liberty in the Spirit, liberty in the Word, liberty in the body. Thank you, God. God is what our hearts long to be overcome by your presence. Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts your hands to Jesus. Thank him tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you. Give him a thanksgiving shout. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Give him a praise, a praise shout. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. tonight. Thank you for grace tonight. Thank you for grace. Your nature, your character, your word, your work, your ability. Thank you tonight. As we leave here tonight, may we have a pattern of thinking in our minds. The grace of God is sufficient. I've got manifold wisdom and manifold grace. I go out of here with an absolute assurance from God. And I thank Him. I don't think in fellowship with all of the situations and problems, the past, the failures, the sins. I go out of here believing God. And I continue right, to, right through the week believing God. He's going to give manifold grace and wisdom for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every single day. Every hour of every day, every minute. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for blessing us tonight. Father, we thank you tonight. Send us out with an amazing assurance in our hearts, a joy in our hearts, a freedom in our hearts, a peace in our hearts, a contentment in our hearts because of who you are, the giver of manifold grace and manifold wisdom. Father, bless our night tonight. Bless the wrap to follow in 15 minutes. We thank you. Once again, bless Pastor Schaller, those who are traveling with him, those in Las Vegas. Thank you today. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>